Hi, I'm Chris Bailey. I'm a Blender YouTuber over at C Bailey Film. Today I'm bringing you this tutorial with CG Cookie and we're gonna be making coffee. That's right, a fresh brewed cup of coffee straight to you in Blender. Let's get started. Now, don't forget to check out cgcookie.com. There's a lot of amazing tutorials, way more in-depth stuff going on over there. You can get a free trial and start it today, so go check it out. Okay, so this is gonna be a basic intro to using Mantaflow and creating fluids in Blender. So if you've never touched fluids before, this is the tutorial for you. Hopefully we'll be able to get you off the ground and running today for your own projects. Now, I've got this little scene set up with a basic cup and a ground plane. And what we're gonna do is pour some coffee into this cup. Now, every time you do a fluid simulation in Blender, there's gonna be three components. You're gonna have your domain, which is the bounds that describes where your fluid simulation is gonna take place. You're gonna have your inflow, which is what is going to pour the fluid into your scene or generate the fluid. And you can have uh, obstacles or colliders within your object. You can also have something called an outflow, which allows for fluid to leave the scene. Um, but those are the main components that you'll have every time you do a simulation. So let's go ahead and start with the first component, which is the domain. Now the domain is made by creating a cube, okay? You just create a normal cube and you scale it up and you wanna make sure that it's big enough to contain the area that you're gonna to need to have uh, your fluid simulation taking place in. I'm gonna to switch to wireframe view so it's a little easier for me to see. If you know that you're not gonna have fluid go beyond like this point on the cup, you can actually scale down your domain so that it's not gonna to be too big. The smaller it is, the faster it's gonna be able to process and handle uh, computing the fluid sim. Now in order to turn this into a domain, what I need to do is come over here to the uh, physics tab and I'm gonna turn on fluid. Now, it asks me what type of fluid do I want? And we can have several different types, but we're gonna go for a domain type. Now, within the domain type, there's a ton of settings. And this is actually where you're gonna do most of your controls and settings for your fluid simulation. But we're gonna leave these just for a second, okay? Next thing we need to create is our inflow. So I'm gonna create just a simple UV sphere. Now you could use anything, really. So I'm gonna scale it down, bring this up. I won't bring it too far. I want it just kind of just above my cup here. So this is gonna be my inflow object. Again, you're gonna come over to the physics tab. You're gonna go to fluid and you're gonna click that button to turn it on. And then right here under type, we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna pick the option for flow. Now the last thing we need to do is come to our cup and we're gonna turn this into a collider. So let's turn on fluid for this as well. And this time we're gonna say, I want it to be an effector. The effector type is set to collision. One thing that's important to note is this geometry that I have, this mug, you can see it's got sort of two sides. It's got some thickness to it, right? So that's gonna allow Blender to calculate the collision a lot easier. But if you have an object like a single plane, for example, like the ground plane that I have in my scene here, you can see this ground plane is just a single piece of geometry, it's just one polygon. So if that's the case, and that's the thing you want to be colliding with your fluid, you need to make sure what you turn on is planar. And that is the thing that helps to uh, calculate properly if you've got an unclosed mesh, right, is what it's called. In this case, I've got a closed mesh, so I don't have to worry about that. Now we're gonna come back over to our domain and we're gonna switch the domain type from gas to liquid, okay? Because we're not simulating a gas. You'll see that your cube will suddenly become solid again. And that's because this cube is going to be the mesh for our fluid once we finish our simulation. So it's made the, the, the mesh visible again, basically for us. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go over to my sphere, my inflow, I'll switch back to wireframe view so we can see. And uh, I'll come over here, make sure that my flow type and behavior is set properly. So my flow type is going to be liquid and my flow behavior is not gonna be geometry, it's gonna be inflow. Now the difference between these three, geometry basically means if I wanted a ball of liquid, to just drop into my scene and hit the hit the floor and splash, I would use geometry because it's gonna take the geometry of my object. So say I took this mug, right, and put it up in the sky and used geometry as the flow behavior, I would have a liquid shaped mug that falls, hits the ground and splashes everywhere. But I don't want that. I want a continuous flow like a faucet or a spout pouring into my scene. So that's why I wanna change from geometry, I wanna set it to inflow. Now outflow, of course, is what I was talking about earlier. If you wanna have fluid exit your scene, but we're not gonna do that here. So the next step we wanna do is we need to tell Blender to take this fluid sim and turn it into some mesh for us, okay? There are situations where you don't want it to be mesh. You wanna actually just get the particles and do other things with them. But in this particular case, we wanna have mesh. So you're gonna to come to your domain and you wanna scroll down until you see this mesh option. We're gonna turn that on. Now, immediately everything disappears. What's going on? Well, now our, our mesh has, our cube has become the fluid uh, simulation itself. So you can see if I hit play, 
we're getting something happening here. Now, it's really important to understand that it's very unstable to run a fluid sim straight in your timeline like this. You're not really gonna get good results as you can see. I mean, look at that. That's that's not really what we're after. So if you ever wanna get reliable, consistent results to be able to see what's actually going on, you really need to use the cache to view your fluid. So the cache is right below mesh. So we come down here again on the domain and we're gonna change this from replay. We're gonna set it to all. And the reason to do that is this is basically going to save your fluid cache as a file on your computer. Now, watch out, these files can get big. So if you do a lot of simulations, you might be slowly eating up your hard drive. So keep in mind where it's putting this and check it out. Now, by setting this to all means we can actually save this and use it in other scenes as well, which is a really cool and powerful tool. But it's gonna be a really stable way of us previewing our fluid. So set it to all and go ahead and click bake all and it'll start to bake through the simulation. Now you don't have to bake the entire simulation, right? We're just testing to see if things are working properly. So you can hit escape and that will turn off the sim. So let's see what's happening. All right, so we're getting a little bit of liquid and it's kind of behaving a bit weird and it doesn't quite work. It's sort of just like, yeah. At least we know now everything is behaving, right? In some way, it's like functioning, it's turning into fluid. So we're making progress. Now I'm gonna go ahead and free all to get rid of my bake. And I am gonna switch to wireframe mute because it gets annoying going back and forth and having the cubes constantly blocking your view. And, uh, what I want to talk about next is the concept of resolution in a fluid. So you can see this little box down here in the corner. This represents the size of my fluid sim voxels, right? Now, a voxel is exactly the same thing as what you find in Minecraft, right? So if you've seen Minecraft, I mean, if you haven't seen Minecraft, like seriously, where have you been like the past decade? But anyways, Minecraft is made up of voxels, all the little cubes that make up like the, the water and the, the mountains, everything in that game is a voxel and a voxel is basically like kind of like a particle but they're divided evenly right so this cube if you imagine this giant square or domain filled with cubes this size whenever a fluid particle enters one of these cubes we're going to get a voxel there so one of those cubes is going to fill with mesh and so it kind of determines the resolution of our fluid so the larger our voxels are, the chunkier and the grosser our fluid sim is and the worse off all the simulation stuff is behaving. Don't get stuck trying to mess with settings to get things looking right if you've got a large uh, resolution size. So in order to change that, let's come right up here to the top, resolution divisions. I'll just pull this out a little bit so we can actually read these names. So at, by default, it's set to 32. Now we're gonna turn this up. I'm gonna go to 64. The 64 scale, um, 64 resolution divisions. Let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna come down here again to bake and I will bake. Okay, so I've gone to frame 50 and I've hit escape to stop the sim. And you can kind of see that things are starting to look a whole lot better. So we haven't really changed any settings in terms of how the fluid behaves. All we've done is increase the resolution. And you notice we're no longer getting these little weird snaky bits that are kind of going off. It's no longer exiting the cup and like sliding off and all that weird stuff that was happening. It's actually looking uh, like a fluid. So if we come over here now, I can preview what this is looking like. See, it splashes down really nicely, fills the cup. This is now a piece of mesh that you can work with, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and right click and shade smooth. And uh, you can start working on your material. You can start thinking about how you want to do things. You can do things like animate the sphere, your inflow, and it's going to cause the fluid to move around as it comes into your scene. There's a lot you can do with this. The next step for me is to really fill this cup up. So what I want to do is run my sim long enough to be able to see it all kind of happen, but it's going really slow. So I kind of want to find a happy medium where I can still get the proper behavior and not have to wait forever for it. So I'm gonna come back to my domain and I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna free all, and I'll come back up and 64 looks good, but let me drop it down. I'll drop it down to like 40 and see if that can give me something. Okay, so 40 is giving me something that I can work with a little bit better. Now, it's still giving the weird result here, but at least I know now that it's actually behaving the way I expect it to when I do it at a higher resolution. Now that I'm doing it at a lower resolution, I can bake these a lot quicker and kind of plan a bit what I need to do to try and make it work. So one thing I'm noticing is it's gonna take a long time to fill this cup up at the moment with the size of my inflow. So I think I'm gonna make it bigger. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna free all again. You gotta get used to doing this. It's a lot of back and forth with Fluid Sims and I'll scale this up so that it's a bit larger and then I'll come back over to my domain and bake this. 
All right, so now you can see that I'm actually filling up my cup because I've got enough fluid coming in. I've got a large enough inflow to really make this work. And I'm getting some nice results. I've got some weird stuff where things are breaking through, but remember that's coming from my resolution. Now, in order to turn off the flow and stop pouring the coffee, I need to come over here to my inflow and I need to animate this value right here, the use flow value. So what I wanna do is look at basically where's the level of coffee that I want. Now, I like as much coffee as possible. I don't know about you. So, I mean, a full mug is a good mug in my opinion. So I'm gonna come right up to here and I'm gonna set a keyframe for use flow. And then I'm gonna just come to this next frame right here, turn it off and set another keyframe. So now the flow is gonna turn off. So at this point from frame 39, the flow will stop entering the scene and the fluid will settle. Okay, so I've got my fluid sim and I've run it back at 64 for my resolution once again. And I've uh, given it that so I can see what it looks like really kind of sitting up the edge of the cup. And I've got my inflow turning off right around here. So you can see the effect, it's really nice. It's able to, uh, you know, fill the cup up. Now I, to do my final sim, I really wanna use a higher resolution. So I might even double this again and go all the way up to 128 or even 200. Depends on how fast your CPU is and how willing you are to wait for it. So the higher you go, the more realistic your fluid sim is going to work. That's pretty much it. Next thing we wanna think about is, okay, how would we then texture this to make it look like well, coffee? So let's do that. I'm gonna go into rendered view and make sure that I'm set to EV. I'm gonna turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. And I'm gonna take my inflow and I'm actually gonna hide it. So we don't really need that on for our render. Now you can turn on your uh, restriction toggles up here by clicking on this little filter. And then we can turn off from visibility and from render the sphere so it doesn't actually render. Now, sometimes it's helpful to uh, take your collider object that you're using and you can hide it and then make another version of it basically. So sometimes you can get clipping or uh, there might be some problems with your sim where it's kind of going outside the bounds of your cup. So sometimes what I like to do is to actually hide the one that I'm using the sim with and uh, just duplicate it, make another one, make sure it doesn't have the fluid sim on it. So it's its own thing. And then what you can do with that is you can scale it up or down to kind of crop in a little bit on your fluid. So it sits even tighter uh, against your cup. So you can see if it come right to the edge here, it's gonna sit really nicely in there, okay? So let's work on a material now. Open up my shader editor. And uh, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click new to create a new material with my coffee selected. And I'm just gonna go and make a couple of simple changes. So uh, let's go to a frame where we can just see the coffee. Actually, let's go to where it's pouring, it'll be nice. And I'm gonna take my base color and I'm gonna make it a really kind of dark red like this. And then I want to turn up transmission. I'm going to bring it all the way up. Now, transmission is not going to do anything in Eevee unless you turn on some special settings. In cycles, this will work automatically out the gate. But if I come over here, I can go options and I'll just drag this out so you can see it. I can turn on my blend mode to alpha hashed or alpha blend, depending on the effect. And same with the shadow mode. And then I can turn on screen space refraction, refraction and screen space translucency. Then what I can do is come over to my render settings and down here to screen space reflections and turn on refraction. And now my liquid is going to start refracting light a little bit, but I need to actually change my IOR. So I'm gonna drag this down. And as I drag it down, you're gonna start to see through the, the cup. Now IOR stands for index of refraction, right? So it's basically how much does it refract the light? Now you can look up what the exact index of refraction is for coffee, but I'm just gonna mess around with this till I get something that looks kind of cool. And uh, again, you can see the transmission makes it go transparent, uh, makes the light shine through it. Now, uh, I'm gonna turn my specular up and I'm gonna bring my roughness right down because liquid is not rough at all. Okay, I might brighten it up a little bit and there we go. We've got ourselves some coffee. I really hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Hope you had a lot of fun and learned some cool things about the basics of fluid simulation. And I uh, hope you're off to a great start with your own projects now. Enjoy your cup of coffee. I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.